Here we're gonna look at an integral from the 2006 MIT integration B. We're gonna do this via a straightforward substitution, but our solution will give hints towards a trick which is a little bit more elegant, but it's detailed in a math stack exchange post. So I'll let you guys look at that if you're interested. Okay, so we've got this integral which I'll call I, and it's a definite integral from zero to pi over four of cosine of x plus sine of x over nine plus 16 sine two x dx. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. I'll copy this thing up here. So I've got the integral from zero to pi over four sine x plus cos x over 9 plus 16 sine 2x dx. And like I said, we're just going to do straightforward substitutions, kind of follow our nose, not thinking that we've worked on this problem before, and so we don't know what the tricks are. So maybe the first thing that we would like to do is make some sort of u substitution for the denominator. So that's a common first step. So let's go ahead and do that and see where that gets us. So let's set u equal to 9 plus 16 times sine 2x. Now let's calculate the derivative because we'll need a du component if u is the denominator. So let's see, du is going to be, well, the derivative of 9 is 0. A 2 is going to come out here and we'll have 32 times cosine because the derivative of sine is cosine and then 2x dx. Okay, great. But notice this is not at all what looks like we have in the denominator. So this is not super helpful at the moment. But perhaps we can use some trig identities to help us. We've got two trig identities down here. Those are the double angle identities for sine and cosine. We've got cosine here. So let's maybe go ahead and use that. We've got cosine of 2x equals cos squared of x minus sine squared of x. So that means we can rewrite du as 32 times cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x dx. But notice we've got a difference of squares now, so we might as well factor that difference of squares. That's going to give us 32, and then we'll have cosine of x plus sine of x times cosine of x minus sine of x dx. But that's actually pretty helpful because notice we've got a sine x plus cosine x up here that can be gobbled up into this guy right here. Okay, so let's see where we can go from there. Well, maybe we could also write something in terms of u using this thing right here. Hmm. So maybe we'll like square this and take the, the square root. And I want to notice that doing that will not really mess anything up because we're on the interval 0 to pi over 4. And since we're on the interval 0 to pi over 4, the cosine is always bigger than the sine. So we don't need to get any absolute values involved. So let's see. We've got this is equal to 32. And then we have cos x plus sine x. And then we'll have the square root of, well, this cosine squared well, cosine minus sine squared. But multiplying that out will give us cosine squared plus sine squared minus two cosine times sine. So let's maybe write that down. Cosine squared plus sine squared, that's one minus two cos x sine x like that. And then we'll have dx. Okay, good. But let's see, we can go a little bit further because we know that this 2 cosine x sine x is actually sine 2x. So let's maybe go ahead and write that. We have this is equal to 32 cos x plus sine x. And now we're going to have the square root of 1 minus 2, sorry, 1 minus sine 2x. Good. But now let's look at our substitution that we have originally. So our substitution that we have originally has sine 2x in terms of u essentially. So notice maybe we could plug that in to our substitution way down here by solving for sine of 2x. So if we solve this for sine of 2x, let's see what we're gonna get. We're gonna get one over 16 
So that's what we get after dividing by 16, which will kind of be the second step. And then we'll have times u minus nine. Great. So now let's see how this works. So by our substitution, this entire denominator is gonna become u, but then our sine x plus cosine x dx, which I'll underline over here in blue, can be replaced with this du divided by all of these things that I have over here in purple. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So this is gonna be a bit of a mess for a second. So I've got an integral. Well, I'll talk about the bounds in just a second. And then I'll have one over u. So that, become, that comes from the u that's in the denominator. And then I'll also have a one over 32. So that comes from dividing this thing by 32. And then I'll have this one over the square root of, well, let's see what we have here. We've got one minus this one over 16 u minus nine. So let's see if we can make that look a little bit better. That's gonna end up being 25 over 16 minus u over 16, and all of that is under the radical. So let's talk our way through that. We've got here one, which is 16 over 16 and then we're subtracting a negative nine over 16. So that gives us this 25 over 16. Okay, so now it looks like we're in good shape. We can just put a du here, and now we need to talk about the bounds of integration. So let's see, when x is equal to zero, well, u is going to be equal to nine. Good, and now when x is equal to pi over four, u is going to be equal to, well, sine of pi over four times two is sine of pi over two, but sine of pi over two is one, so we've got nine plus 16, we've got 25 up here. So that's the kind of thing that we have going on at the moment. Okay, great. So now let's maybe simplify this as much as we can. So how much can we simplify it? Well, first, let's maybe go ahead and take a 16 out of this denominator. So that's gonna give us the integral from nine to 25. We can take a 16 out of that denominator, it becomes a four, but then that four in the denominator will cancel with the 32 and give us an eight. I can bring that out of the um, integral. So I've got one over eight, and then I have one over u times the square root of 25 minus u du. So now we'd really like the more complicated thing to be outside of the radical instead of inside of the radical. So notice we've got u outside of the radical, but 25 minus u inside of the radical. That's a little bit more difficult than if we had the opposite. So let's make another substitution. Let's say we'll let t equal 25 minus u. That means du is equal to minus dt, like that. And then that also means that u is equal to 25 minus t. So when we do our change here, let's see what we get. We'll get one over eight, and then we'll have the integral of, so it's gonna be minus dt from the minus sign that we picked up from du. And then next we'll have 25 minus t times the square root of t. Now let's see what we have for our bounds of integration. So our lower bound of integration, sorry, our upper bound of integration will be zero, because if we plug in u equals 25, we'll get zero, and our lower bound of integration will be 16. 25 minus nine is 16. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this minus sign and let it flip the bounds of the integration. So we'll have one over eight, and then the integral from zero to 16 of one over 25 minus t, times the square root of t dt. Good. Now let's maybe bring this to here and we'll continue on. So we've worked ourselves down to the following integral. So i, which was our original goal, is now 1 8th the integral from 0 to 16 of 1 over 25 minus t times the square root of t dt. Now we're going to do one last substitution before we kind of start finishing this thing off. And the substitution will be for this square root of t. 
The motivation here is that the derivative of the square root of t puts a square root of t into the denominator. Then we can express this t as the square root of t squared, so we'll be good to go there. So let's say maybe y is equal to the square root of t. Notice that's equal t to the half. That's going to make dy equal to 1 half t to the minus half, but notice that's going to be equal to 1 over 2 times the square root of t, like that. And then I should put a dt here. Okay, so let's see. We can take this 8 and rewrite it as 4 times 2. And then this two, along with this root t dt, those are all gobbled up by my dy. And then this t right here is gonna be y squared. Okay, so let's see what effect that has. We're gonna have one quarter. So the quarter comes from canceling out the two, it got eaten up by the dy. And then next we're gonna have the integral. We'll do the bounds of integration in just a second. Then we'll have one over 25 minus y squared dy, like that. Now let's see, when t is zero, y is zero. When t is 16, y is four. So this is the integral from zero to four, like that. Okay, but now it looks like we could maybe do a partial fraction decomposition. So let's maybe outline the partial fraction decomposition over here. So we would like to take one over 25 minus y squared and probably rewrite it as a over y minus five plus b over y plus five. It's a standard partial fraction decomposition for something like this. So let's multiply both sides by 25 minus y squared, so we can cancel both sides of the equation, or maybe by 25 or y squared minus 25. That'll leave us with a minus one on the left-hand side of the equation. It'll leave us with an a times y plus five on the right, and a b times y minus five on the right as well. So let's see. Now we'll have constant term equation and an equation from our linear term, in other words, our y term. So now the constant terms on the right-hand side of the equation are 5a minus 5b. And so that's going to be equal to negative 1 because that's what we've got on the left-hand side of the equation. Then the coefficients of y on the right are a plus b, and on the left is 0. Okay, cool. So that's going to tell us immediately that b is equal to negative a. But now we can plug b equals negative a back up here. And let's say that means we're going to have 10a equals negative 1, which means a equals negative 1 over 10, which means b equals 1 over 10. Positive, because they're of opposite sign. So that means we have a way to decompose this integral using this partial fraction decomposition. So let's see what that gives us. We're going to have a quarter like that, then we'll have the integral from zero to four, and then I've just rewritten this one over 25 minus y squared using these parts right here. I can go ahead and factor a one over 10 out of the whole thing, that'll give us a one over 40 in front of the whole thing, four times 10. And then let's see, that's gonna leave us with a negative one over this y minus five, and a positive one over y plus five then we'll have dy here. Now, the antiderivative of that is pretty straightforward. It involves natural logarithms. So let's see, we'll have one over 40, and then we'll have the ln of the absolute value of y plus five minus the natural log of the absolute value of y minus five. We need to go ahead and evaluate that from zero to four. So let's see what we get. When we evaluate that thing at zero, we'll have the natural log of five minus the natural log of five, that's gonna cancel off. When we evaluate that at four, we're going to have the natural log of nine from this term minus the natural log of one, but the natural log of one is zero. So that ends us up with one over 40 natural log of nine. But now nine is three squared, so we can use some logarithm rules to rewrite this as 1 over 20, natural log of 3. And that's a good place to stop.